Today we'll be taking a trip to a well-known retreat on the edge of Western Europe, the Park and National Palace of Pina, hereafter referred to as the Pina Palace. This structure is located in the historic Centro region of Portugal, just to the west of the capital, Lisbon. Centro is home to a small mountain range which overlooks the Atlantic Ocean and is now the site of a very large national park, along with a collection of villages located at the base of the mountains. Both Lisbon and Portugal in general are fascinating places. Lisbon, in fact, is probably the most interesting place I've visited in the entirety of Europe, having traveled extensively across that continent. It's a very old settlement that calls upon the influence of the Portuguese, who played a critical role in the exploration and colonization of what is now the New World, in other words, the Americas. The Portuguese have a unique culture, being somewhat distant from much of Europe. The country has historical ties to other societies on the peninsula of Iberia, of which Portugal is a part, as well as northern Africa, which is located a short distance away at the southern tip of Spain. Numerous conquests from outside societies over the years, such as the Moors, have shaped the local culture in many ways. This, in addition to the Mediterranean climate and landscape, gives Portugal a unique vibe not found in much of the rest of Europe. The Pina Palace specifically gives insight into the Portuguese crown, particularly as it pertains to the monarchy's role in Europe and the colonization of the New World. What that means is Portugal, more so than other European states, has often looked across the Atlantic, both metaphorically and literally, as a source of opportunity. And much of this history is articulated in the palace and its surroundings, and the central region is very much worth a visit, especially if you're visiting and looking at cultural artifacts in the capital, Lisbon. Now, if you're traveling to Portugal from the United States, I highly recommend the Pina Palace. It is an absolute must, not just for the estate, but due to the breadth and depth of activities you can do nearby. Here's some things to understand before you go. First, it's important to recognize the difference between Centra, the village, and the grouping of activities nearby that are collectively referred to as Centra. The Pina Palace is located within a broader national park, which contains a number of tourist attractions, including other estates that are as impressive as the Pina Palace. There can be many miles of distance between these attractions, and you can't necessarily drive between them. Centra is therefore a huge place, and it would literally take you a week or more to see everything in the park. For that reason, I very much recommend planning out what you'll want to see beforehand, especially if you're limited on time and or will be traveling with multiple people, as this will make the logistics of access considerably easier. Additionally, the mechanics of getting to the Pina Palace from the village of Centra requires some thought ahead of time. Visiting the palace itself requires reservations and you'll book tickets for these in advance online. However, because the palace is located deep in the hills of the National Park, you'll need to account for the time it takes to actually get there after arriving in the town of Centra, which is located at the base of the mountains. It can take an hour or more to reach the palace, even if using motorized transportation from the Centra train station, and even longer if hiking uphill on foot, which I do not recommend for older adults, groups, or families with young children. Even for younger adults in good health, it would take upwards of 45 minutes to reach the entrance to the palace on foot from the train station, probably much longer if visiting for the first time. And then you'll need to account for an extra 15 minutes to get from the entrance to the grounds to reach the house itself. So all in all, you'll need to plan for about 90 minutes of time between your arrival in Centra at the train station to your reservation at the front door of the palace because it absolutely will take you that long to get up and down the mountain. Once you're there though, you'll be glad you went because there are a lot of things to like about the Pina Palace. Here's some aspects I enjoyed most. Number one. The history. The Pina Palace is a designated World Heritage Site with particular cultural significance and religious context. Number two, the scenery. The palace is near to forest, mountains, plains, and ocean. You'll want to bring your camera with you to capture this nature. Number three, the convenience. The palace is adjacent to the capital of Lisbon and numerous other points of interest within the broader park. Number four, the architecture. The palace provides a good glimpse into everyday life for the Portuguese crown during its use as a private residence. Number five, the setting. While the palace itself can be very busy with a lot of visitors, the environs are excellent places to contemplate and explore. And finally, number six, the activities. You will combine different modes of transport to get up and down the mountain, which can involve taking a train, a jitney, hiking, whatever. 
And just as a reminder, these are my perceptions of the palace and park as I experience them, and yours may differ considerably. You should therefore exercise caution when traveling and consider your own preferences and needs before doing so. So first let's talk about the history. The Pina Palace, while relatively young when compared to the estates of other kingdoms around Europe, was the location for religious rites for many hundreds of years prior to the construction of the palace in the mid-19th century. Historically speaking, the vicinity of what is now Sintra has been continuously settled since at least the Middle Ages, and prior to the existence of the palace, there were two structures at the site. The first of these was a small chapel, which was followed many centuries later by a monastery. For a long time, monks would visit the chapel for reflection, but it wasn't until later in the 15th century that the monastery was installed permanently at the location. This monastery also lasted hundreds of years until the 18th century when it succumbed to a series of natural disasters. Finally, in the mid-19th century, the Portuguese crown took possession of the Sintra area and its surrounding structures with the intent of using the location as a summer retreat, with construction of the palace completed by the year 1855. The royal family used the structure as a summer residence until as late as the early 20th century, when certain members of the Portuguese elite were deposed in an overthrow of the crown in 1910. Since that time, the site has been used as a museum and national park, so the Pena Palace is an important place with a long association not only with the Portuguese crown, but the Catholic Church as well. Another thing to like about the Pena Palace is the scenery. While making your way up the mountain to get to the house, you'll be surrounded by forest, which has limited visibility of your surroundings, but is still interesting. However, as you get closer and closer to the top, the views get better and better. And then, once you're inside the palace, the scenery is excellent from the house itself because on a clear day, you can see all the way to Lisbon and beyond. There are many things you can see, in fact, from the top of the palace. So if you're facing the east, you have good views of Lisbon and its suburbs, as well as the Christ the King monument on the other side of the water from Lisbon. Closer to the palace itself, you have the village of Sintra to the north with excellent visibility, as well as the Moorish castle and other nearby monuments, such as the Palace of Sintra. So if you're going to Sintra, I highly recommend making reservations for the Moorish castle before or after you visit the palace for the views alone, because you will have an unobstructed view of the entire Portuguese countryside to the north. And then as you face the west, you can see the vast Atlantic Ocean on a clear day which is where the abrupt cliffs of Portugal meet the sea less than 10 miles from the palace. So be sure to bring your personal camera with you when you visit the park, as you'll need to be able to capture distant locations with a lot of detail. And this is another aspect I really liked about the Pina Palace. You're close to so many other attractions. Since you'll be visiting the Central National Park to access the palace in the first place, you may as well check out some other stuff while you're there. There is a very cool and very famous initiation well and waterfall on the grounds located north of the palace, in addition to the Moorish Castle. You have access, of course, to the rest of the National Park and the many smaller points of interest within it, such as the giant cross located at the park's highest point to the south of the palace. And then you have other historical homes nearby to see, such as the Sintra Palace. This is a separate estate located in the modern village of Sintra itself. The modern village of Sintra is interesting in its own right with a lot of small shops and good transport connections to Lisbon and beyond. So it's very easy to get to the center of Lisbon from Sintra. So the entire area has plenty to do for backpackers and tourists when the weather is good and has great transit connections as well. Now let's talk about the architecture. The Pina Palace is impressive from an architectural perspective due to its eccentric style. This is one of the things I liked most about the structure and it was the first detail I noticed when visiting. From the outside, the palace gives the appearance of a vast estate, but the nuance is different from other historical residences around Europe. This is because the building has a look that incorporates many different elements, so the structure can take on a completely different appearance depending on how you're seeing it. The entire complex almost looks like a series of buildings that were combined into a single structure at the top of a cliff. And that's what makes it so interesting, especially given the time period in which it was constructed. Many parts of the palace display the traditional Portuguese style with hand-painted tiles and colorful walls, but the middle section, for instance, evokes images of an Orthodox temple. So when you're facing the palace, the front of the palace, there's a section to the left, a section to the middle, and a section to the right. And the middle section kind of has a purple color to it. 
And this middle section, again, evokes images of an Orthodox temple complete with a double tower, each with its own onion dome. And then at the south end, you have a larger dome that caps a rotunda, which reminds one of a government building. And then you have certain defensive features throughout the building in the form of numerous towers and parapet walls, which are common in other castles around Europe. Several courtyards and terraces are strategically placed around the structure, giving good observation points of the surrounding area. And then there's the clock tower on the north side, which can be seen clearly on the path coming to and from the house. Finally, the whole structure is embedded into the side of a mountain, as if it had been there all along, despite only being constructed in the mid-19th century. So the entire complex is fascinating from an architectural perspective alone. But still, you're left wondering about the original intent of the design, you know? Um, when you look at the building in its entirety, you're just left wondering, is it a house? Is it a government building? A place of worship? A military installation? A small village? A museum? Or all of the above? These are some of the questions you'll want to ask yourself in visiting. This concludes part one of our trip report on the park and National Palace of Pina. In a separate video, I'll touch on the setting and activities you'll undergo while on the mountain itself when going to and from the palace, as well as some additional good to know considerations that you won't necessarily see on the review sites. Safe travels and thanks for watching.